Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at three tips for shooting tethered directly into Lightroom from your camera. Now Tether Capture works with select Nikon and Canon DSLRs. However, uh, my first tip is actually a bonus tip for Nikon shooters. So this doesn't count against your three. You still get three tips. But this one's a bonus tip because I have to do it anyway as I'm setting up, so I might as well tell you what it is. Now, when you go to Tether Capture, if you're on a Nikon, or I'm sorry, if you're on a Canon camera, then it doesn't matter. You're all set. If your camera's supported, you just plug in a long USB cable like I've got here, which I'll, you know, I'll give you a link to get one of your own. And then you can begin shooting whether your camera has a memory card in it or not. Because with Canon cameras, if you have a memory card in, your shots will go directly to the memory card. And if you don't have a memory card in, they'll go, or I'm sorry, if they have a memory card in, they'll go to the camera and the computer. If you don't have a memory card in, they'll just go to the computer. However, with Nikon cameras, even if you have a memory card in, when you shoot tethered, it will only send the images to the computer. It will bypass the card completely. So you might think, well, what's the big deal? If it's not gonna use the card, why not just have the memory cards in there anyway? It's not gonna do anything. Well, it does do something. If you have a memory card in your camera, and I believe this applies to both brands, and there are images on that card, then the minute you turn the camera on, your computer has to check the card to see each every, each and every image. It has to just look at it, just basically go through and say, yep, there's an image, there's an image, there's an image. So imagine if you have hundreds of images on that card or thousands of images on that card, how long that takes. Here's, I'll show you an example. I've basically gone up to the file menu and I've done tether capture. Here, I'll do it again from scratch. File, tether capture, start tether capture. I'm gonna say start with number one that's my first image I want to capture. And don't worry, I'm going to come back to give you more tips on this in just a moment. But when I click OK, and my camera is on, by the way, notice it says no camera detected. That's because you'll notice the activity light on the back of the camera is flashing. It's basically looking at every image on, I have two cards in, so every image on both cards to check them out to make sure, hey, they're there, and now you can tether. So the more images I have, the longer it will take for that camera to show up on this bar. And I used to think before I knew that, something's wrong, cable's ro broken, I'm not doing something right. And then all of a sudden it would work and I didn't know why. And it's because it finished reading the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off, take the cards out, both SD cards, close the door and turn the camera on. Here we go. One, two, three, and there it is. So within three, four seconds, it showed up immediately because it didn't have anything to check. It didn't have a memory card to go through and make sure everything was okay on it. It just brought the camera up and said, okay, you're good, you can start tether capture. All right, so that was a bonus tip. Let me go ahead and show you your tips now. So tip number one, I'm gonna close this. We're gonna go back to square one, and we're gonna go up to the file menu. We're gonna come down to Tether capture, start tether capture. So the first tip, your session name will basically be the name of your photos. And you can you know, determine how they're gonna be named and numbered here. And um, once you do that, you can also choose a folder where they're going to go. So what's the tip? The tip is, you notice there's a segment photo by shots. And that really doesn't say anything. What does that mean? So if I turn that on, and when I click OK, I'm gonna get another dialog that says, what do you want your first one to be? And I'm gonna say it's gonna be the Photoshop pillow, because that's where we're shooting. It could be the it could be the model Andy versus Ann. It could be the blue dress versus the green dress. It could be whatever two or three or four or five things you're shooting that you want separated into each folder. So now I'm gonna have a folder called Terry's Office and a subfolder called PS Pillow. So when I click OK, it did just that. Over on the left-hand side, there's Terry's Office and a PS Pillow folder in it. And notice on the tether bar, it now says PS Pillow because that's the session we're doing. So I'll go ahead and take a shot. 
there's a pillow over there uh, sitting on a chair. We'll take the shot and it will come in tethered. Now, once that shot's there, I can go, I can go hit the letter E and see it large, and then it will just advance to the next one. So I can keep taking shots of that pillow. And those shots will keep coming in, and I'll keep seeing them nice and large in my loop view. So that was tip number one, is that, wait, we got that shot by segment, it's putting them in that folder, what if you want to now switch over to the Illustrator pillow, which is right next to it? So now if I click, I get to rename this, whatever I want. So I'll name it the AI, Adobe Illustrator pillow. When I click OK, it will now make a folder, subfolder in Terry's office for that. And now I can start shooting the other pillow. And those shots will come in tethered into that pillow. or. <laughs> Not that pillow, that folder. So you can basically segment your shoot by whatever categories you want. The different models, the different poses, the different outfits, the different subjects, the different products, the different whatever it is you're shooting, segment by that. Now, the next one, that's tip number one. Tip number two, you notice on the bar here, there's a develop setting. And what that means is it will basically do nothing right now, or you can use any one of your presets to automatically apply to any of the images that come in. But you notice at the top, there's a same as previous. What does that mean? Well, let me show you how to use that. Tip number two, I've got a gray card sitting on the floor that I'm going to use to white balance these shots. Now, normally people might do that at the end of the shoot. In other words, you shoot the gray card, you shoot 100 shots, you go in, select 100 shots, and you click the white balance eyedropper on the gray card, and they all white balanced. But what if you wanted to see it white balanced as you go? So let me go ahead and take a shot of the gray card. And that will, of course, bring it up in tether, or in the folder, there it is. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the white balance. So I'm gonna temporarily hit the letter D to switch over to the develop module. And now that I'm in the develop module, I'll click the white, white balance eyedropper and I'm getting a nice one even there, over there in the preview. I click and okay, now that shot's been white balanced. But it only did it for this one. It didn't do it for the previous ones because they were already there. So now if I set this to same as previous, now when I take my next shot, go back to the pillow, it will bring that shot in and apply whatever settings I've done in the develop module. So it just white balanced it. So now all the shots I take from here on out will be white balanced. I won't have to go back and do it later and I get to see it as I'm doing it. Okay, so that was tip number two. Tip number three, and this is gonna be maybe three and four. I'm gonna give you another bonus one here. The other one is, since Lightroom 5 supports full screen, I don't like to look at my images in loop view anymore when I'm tethering. I like to see them take, take up the full screen. So I'm going to hit the letter F, and that will fill the screen. And that way, now when I shoot, I'm getting the full screen and the white balancing happening as I go. So hitting the letter F is not just for reviewing your shots after the fact, you can actually use it for your tether capture as well. So that was tip number three. Now, let's say you do like loop view. The other tip, bonus tip here, is that this tether bar is here at all times, no matter what. So if I go back to loop view, it's there. Hey, it's there, oh my God, it's everywhere. It's no matter what, it's no matter how, how small it is, it's in the way. Well, here's what you can do. Hit the, letter, hit the command key, command T on the Mac, control T on Windows, and that just hides it. So basically, it's still there. It's still on, still functioning, but it's no longer in my way. It's no longer on screen. And you notice that full screen did that automatically. It just turned it off because it figured in full screen, you probably don't want to see that. So those are three tips for shooting tethered. 
Uh, if you have my app, I'm going to give you one or two more bonus tips in the app. But from there, we'll go from there once we get out of the main episode. So thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White, and I hope you got something out of this Lightroom, three tips for shooting tethered. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Uh -huh.